Hi everybody and welcome back to Nellie and Ruth Designs. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to take you on a tour of my potting shed. Um, this little piece here, I do have a lot of art in my potting shed, but this little piece here is just a little resin piece, as you can see, of a little boy and girl under an umbrella. And this came from my mom's neighbor, Mary. And Mary lived next to us for, well, probably 68 years. And she used to have a lot of these little figurines out in her yard. And after her passing, her son called me, invited me to come over to the house to see um, if there was anything I wanted. And Mary had a ton of items. She was a shopper and a hoarder. Um, so I took a few things, and this was one of them because it just reminded me of playing in her backyard when I was a little girl and she was always so kind to my twins when they were little um, and they would run over to Mary's house like I used to when I was little and um, so it just reminded me you know of Mary's garden of her she had flower gardens and a nice vegetable garden so I just thought this would be a nice little addition to my garden um, so let's head over to my potting shed and I'll show you what I do in there and some of the art that I have. Okay, so this is my potting shed. Um, it's a fairly large building, and we built this to house my husband's um, cat skid steer that he plows and snow blows our driveway with in the winter. Um, we're 450 feet back from the main road, so we need something heavy duty, a snow blower won't do it, and we don't like to have plows come in to dig up the yard and the flower beds. So um, this is my potting shed. And um, the lights here, we have these throughout our yard. These are lights that you will find if you go to Central Park in New York City. These are the same exact lights that they have there, and they're just wonderful. Um, we're on five plus acres up here, and it's really dark at night, so we have these throughout the property and the wood line and um, things like that. So I'm going to take you into my potting shed, and I've been working diligently yesterday on all of these windows. We have um, a lot of birds that like to come and they will make nests on top of the windows and on top of the sills. So they were, it was pretty messy yesterday. Um, so this here, my little sign, we will, the mosquitoes are out, they are biting me alive. So I'm gonna try to get in the potting shed and I may even end up shutting the garage door. So let's head in. See if I can change my camera angle. There we go. Change my camera angle. So this is my potting shed. And in the winter, um, like I said, we house um, my husband's cat skid steer in here. And there's my mule, um, which serves me very well. Um, like I said, because we have the five acres, I do need this to um, get around and put my grass clippings in um, and all that. That's where my son and daughter-in-law live. That's our carriage house. And um, I have a few beds, you know, around the potting shed. And um, But we are surrounded by woods, and I just, I love it. Um, so I'm going to hold up here, hopefully... Like I said, I may have to shut the door because for some reason, with all the rain, oh, the mosquitoes are just awful this year. So I guess seeing that I'm at the back of the potting shed, um, I can start here. I do have, like I said, a lot of art um, from places we've traveled. I have to remember it's a potting shed. I try to decorate it like a room I would want to live in. I do spend a lot of time out here in the summer. Um, so I try to make it as pleasant and pretty as I can. Uh, but this here is a print of Sloppy Joe's Bar in Key West, Florida, which we spend a lot of time at. Um, this is the artist. 
well, I guess it doesn't say the artist. Oh, over here, yeah, this is a Kennedy. Um, and if you're familiar with Key West, they have Kennedy um, art galleries down there. So this hung in our home for many years until I had it um, remodeled into Great Camp. And this doesn't go with a Great Camp theme, so I thought I would bring it out in my potting shed. So it's nice. Every time I drive my mule in, I'll give a wave to Sloppy Joe's and um, go in and have a beer after I've had my after I've had my uh, my mowing day, my hot mowing day. Um, this is not so pretty, but we do have in the winter time because we try to keep I keep plants in here. We do have a um, radiant heat floor. So this is the heating structure for the radiant heat, and I try to ignore that. Um, these beautiful prints, um, I particularly have them here because this window here is where it's on the, the back side of the potting shed, and it's very remote and intimate. Um, there's like a little patio area out here. Um, but the birds seem to like this side of the potting shed. So, and that's where a lot of the nests get built. And this window here and the window to the other side of the heating unit. Um, so I purchased these on Instagram and I cannot remember who I got them from. But she had many, many, many um, paint by numbers that she was selling um, that she had gotten at an estate sale. And because I love birds, I had to get a few um, of the birds, and I have them displayed in my potting shed. Um, because you'll see that I do, I raised two robins in this shed, and I've got to get some photos framed of Hef and Heifer, that's what I named them. Um, from the time Mama kicked them out of the nest until the time they actually flew out of the potting shed. Um, so I do love my birds as well as my plants. So there's a lot of items in here that um, have special meaning to me. The um, easel here was my dad's and it was also used by my neighbor um, growing up. So they kind of shared it, but this was an easel that my dad used to use to paint and draw, and um, this was on our screened-in back porch for a long time. Um, and I wanted to keep it, and I figured it would be, um, you know, a nice memory of my neighbor of however many years. My goodness, my parents were in their house for almost 70 years before they passed, and they... All the neighbors were there between 60 and 70 years. So um, it just brings back a lot of memories. So it's very special to me. Um, the mugs here are in remembrance of my dad because he was in the liquor business and these were part of his collection. Um, so I have them displayed out here. The painting up here on, if you can see it, it's, I know there's a reflection from the window, but you can see the artist, Joan Allard, and she was my aunt. She lived out in, just outside of Tacoma, Washington. I'm sorry about the glare. glare. Her father was a very famous architect, and he built churches out in um, Tacoma. And she painted, she was a wonderful um, painter with watercolors, and she painted all of the churches that were built throughout the area that he designed. So this is from my Aunt Joanne. She never finished it. My father was very anxious to get it. Um, so she was upset that it really never got done, but he loved it just the way it was. So I have that out here. And then these old vintage um, ski poles were my dad's. So these date back to probably the 1930s. Um, he used them when he was young. 
Um, so they're displayed in here. And then this parlor table, I just think it's the cutest thing and I thought it would fit very well in here. Um, my neighbor had this and um, he asked if I wanted it and I said yes, definitely. So I have that in here and um, I display the newest bird nest that I find on the table and this is the newest one. This bird nest here was actually on one of the windows outside of the potting shed. Um, and I do collect bird nests. I just think that they're absolutely beautiful. I think they're, as far as a bird, um, the architecture that they design and how they um, put a nest together with all the different, you know, these here are from pine trees, um, they gather everything. You know, you're, you, they have the soft material inside. There's mud. They make a, a nice mud pack. They put birch bark in it, anything that they can find. So I just, I love my bird nests. Um, so this is, the, this is the newest one that I found. And again, it sat on the outside of my window. Um, this artwork up over my door these prints came from, the two outside ones came from the Bahamas. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Um, let's see here, yeah. I purchased these, we went on a stone convention and um, I got these two. I think there's actually a third one. I'm not sure where it is, um, probably in storage in my cellar. So, and then the middle one, I really like. Um, this was purchased in Key West, Florida, and it hit home with me because when I was hiking once in a while, I would run across an outhouse, or if I was boating with my girlfriends and we got up into the narrows of the lake, um, they always had outhouses. and. Everybody uses them, you know, men, women, children, animals, mice, whatever. And I just thought this was really cool because it said girls only. So I just, I had to have that. Um, so that hangs in my, in my potting shed. Um, the two butterflies here, these were purchased in Portland, Maine. And these were in an art gallery and I just love them. I think they're just absolutely beautiful. They do have stands, and for years I had them in my garden, um, but I couldn't really enjoy them because if they were in the front garden, I'd be in the back garden, and so I decided to take them off of their stands um, and hang them in my potting shed. Uh, this section here, um, I store all of my, uh, the mosquitoes, sorry, I'm swatting them away. Um, I store them out here in different little contraptions and items. Um, so this one here, I, I like to keep on display because I refer to it. Let's see if I get rid of this glare. I refer to it quite a bit. Um, and this one has, this one is called The Ultimate American Country Living. And I've had this book for many, many years. Um, oh, these mosquitoes. But it has all kinds. It has canning. It has gardening articles. It has Christmas. Um, it's just a wonderful book. So I keep this out here and I refer to it. I'll come out and I'll look at it. I'll bring it in the house and look at it. Um, this section here, this was a picnic basket of my mom and dad's. So I store my books in here, in the picnic basket. And um, these are some of my really the favorite, favorite gardening books to use. Some came from my, my mom. So I keep these and I'll, I'll have to show you some of those at another, a, another time. Some of my favorite gardening books. Um, the Inkelay that I have up here, um, back in the early 80s, late 70s, I worked at Zale Jewelry Store, 
part-time. Um, I worked there nights and weekends because I was working at an insurance company during the week. Um, but I bought this for my mom one Christmas and I just, I love it. Um, so it's supposed to be St. Francis and, um, after her passing, I took that and hung it in here in remembrance of my mom. This here again is a print that I had, um, in my home and it's naturally it's of a bird and of flowers. So, um, that hangs in here. And then I have all of my little winged angels. I bought these over in Woodstock, Vermont, um, in a gardening center. So um, I have them looking over, all the little angels looking over everything. And then, of course, I have the Lord's Prayer next to them to remind me that um, God is amazing in all of his creations, especially the flowers, um, the birds, the bees, the butterflies. Um, so I'm thankful and blessed that the Lord has given us an amazing um, environment to live in um, with all its beauty and wonder. So we have a lot of bees and hornets on our property and they usually make their nests in our maple trees. Um, sometimes we find them, sometimes we don't. And these are, I have three, but these are two that are just amazing. And again, um, I'm just fascinated with how these bees and hornets, I think they're mostly hornets, make their nests. And the, they're almost, if you can hear, they're like paper. Um, and they will build them. They actually built this one right into the, the branch, right into the branch up there. Um, I just find them totally fascinating and you can't really see in there. Um, so we have teak furniture around our pool area and it has turned that weathered gray. Um, so when we're out there, we have to be careful because the hornets will land on the teak furniture and they rough it up and this is actually um, what they make their nests out of. It's, it's like a, it's like a wood or I don't know, but it's just fascinating. Um, the window herbs, I fell in love with this piece. We went over just outside of Manchester, Vermont to the, um, the Lincoln, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It was, this was, I purchased back in the mid eighties, um, Hildeen. Uh, there's a beautiful place over there called Hildeen and they used to have wonderful art shows. And um, so this here is an old window that um, was painted on. And I just, I love it. I think it's so pretty and you know, the sun shines through it and that's the artist I'm trying to see. El, El Towel, it says 07, so it must have been, it couldn't have been 2007. No, it wasn't 2007 um, because I bought that before my boys were born and they were born in 98. Um, so that hangs in my window and I just, I love it. I think it's so pretty. And then I have, oh, underneath here, um, these are all old other than my ugly chemicals. These are all old bowls from my grandma's house. 
Um, and these date back to the 1920s. Um, these we found in storage after my mom passed and we were going through the house. Um, we had a dry space in our cellar um, and it was just dirt and dry, a very dry area. I don't know why. I think it was after my dad put the addition on the dining room. It was just a dirt floor under there. And my brother and I split these up. Um, but there was all kinds of these from my grandma's house. So these are very old, old, old pieces that my dad had taken from the homestead and stored. So my grandma's here. And then um, over here is my grandfather, actually my great-grandfather. Um, this was his old little tool um, box that he had to put his probably tools in, his screwdrivers. Um, we have all his old, very old woodworking tools. So he must have been some sort of woodworker. Um, so I use this to hold, you know, some tools in that I occasionally use out here at the shed. And then I have this desk that came from my mother-in-law's and I use this, it's an old school desk, and I just use this to store my manuals in for my um, John Deere rider, riding lawnmower and um, things like that. So that's from my great-grandfather. And then this um, chest here is from my great-grandfather. Um, and these are, I have two of his chests and this one here, I have not touched, I have not done anything to. And this houses um, things such as, um, oh gosh, um, nozzles for hoses, replacement parts. Um, I have a torn and tattered American flag in there that's all folded up. Um, just, you know, bits and pieces, things that I need to. I have a lot of um, like miracle Grow packets in there, things that I need and I use, but they don't need to be out on display. So that's my grandparents section. And then the boots were my boys when they were little, sloshing around outside. And then up here um, is another watercolor that I got at the same time I obtained the birds. And this pegboard, again, it just houses um, I love my to dry my poppy seeds, and then I'll just put them any old way in this little wire basket. Um, here's another nest up here that I have displayed. The paint by number here. I've got my, these are for my trees. I have to do quite a bit of... Um, Tree, uh, what do you call it? Um, I was going to call it tree labor, not tree labor. Um, maintenance, tree maintenance. Limbs, we have cherry trees, and I have to cut a lot of suckers out of them. Um, I have a little rack here, an old vintage rack where I hang my, my scissors that I use. Um, this box here, that this is from my... The old homestead. A lot of these came from, this is my dad's handwriting. Um, these here, he always saved his Cosmo seeds um, and he dated them. And then um, I have all kinds of seeds that are labeled in here. These are um, tall purple hosta and iris seeds mixed together. Um, pink mallow. I love, if you don't know what mallow looks like, it's a beautiful plant. So um, I'll start a lot of these inside here. These are hollyhock um, in the winter, in the spring, and then I can just plant them outside. So this houses all of my, um, these are coneflower seeds. This houses a lot of my seeds. Look at these, aren't these cool? These are, um, I know the name of them, but I can't, starts with a C. But this is actually a shrub, and these are really cool. And then I have all these old, these are old vintage hollyhock 
seeds. So I have, I have them stored in my dad's cigar box and they stay right in here. And then I, when I get a hankering to each spring to start some, I, I go to there. And then this little piece here, I have one little glass that broke, but I use these to start, um, to start plants in. And then this here is fun. This was my dad's old typewriter table. Um, so I grab this and I just use it for a little bit of storage, more storage. And then let's see over here. Um, this was a wreath that I made. I just have it in here because fall is one of my favorite times of year. And when it's hot outside and humid and muggy, I look at this and I just think falls out of the way. Um, and I'll get even more enjoyment from the weather. Um, I have a few little resin pieces here and there that I really enjoy. Um, this is an old grapevine basket that was made. Um, and then I have a really cool butterfly. The girl that used to help me garden, I used to have a full-time gardener. Um, she brought that in um, for all the butterflies. So we have that. Um, you're going to find, this is where I start showcasing some of my my um, bird nests and they come in all shapes and sizes. This one I absolutely love. This is more of like a cone and it has all of the birch bark in it and it's very delicate. This was either a little tiny wren or a sparrow. I haven't looked up yet to see, but we do have little wrens. We have little sparrows. Um, we have dark eyed juncos. We have Phoebes. Um, and then this is a sweet little nest too. It's just, it reminds me of lace, a lot of lace around the outside of it. And again, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny little, little bird nest. Um, and then I always keep at night, I keep a little candle on in the window. And then over here, um, on the bottom here is where I house. I, I don't have a lot of pots in here now. This whole section here will be full of pots in the fall, um, but everything is out. There's plants in them. And um, this is what I had. I didn't get to this summer. Um, this little frog down here, I keep him here. He was my, he belonged to my dad's cousin, um, Chubby. And he used to sit in her living room underneath a table. So I have, I have her in here keeping me company. And then over here, um, I have a very old framed photo. Let me see if I can get out a little bit here of, um, this is little Bo Peep. And this was done by Maud Humphrey, who is... Humphrey Bogart's mother, and she was a wonderful artist. Um, see if I can get in here. She was a wonderful artist, and she did a lot of the storybook girls. And this I was able to get from my in-laws. When they passed, um, we went up, we went over to their home, my husband and I, and he has there's five siblings all together. So they decided what they wanted. And this was a piece that I, I just loved. So I was able to get this and put this out here. Um, this little sweet piece here I purchased from, I don't know if I got this. I know I bought it on Instagram from one of the gals. I don't know if it was Funky Junkie Jen or um, vintage girl Amy, but I just thought she was adorable. And it's a little vase. Um, you can see up at the top here, there's an opening to put things in. And then this piece here was came from the old homestead. Um, this was either my grandfather's or I'm not sure what it's a depiction of, but it reminds me of out west. And that's where a lot of my relatives on my father's side, settled out in Tacoma, Washington. So this reminds me of everybody out in Washington. Um, 
this piece here my son made um, in grade school. I think it's supposed to be a turkey um, at Thanksgiving, but I really like all of the tile work and I just thought it was really wonderful how he depicted um, a turkey dinner with the smoke rising up. And um, I just love the colors and the texture and I do display, and I love this little tiny heart right there um, and over here, there's another one, upside down heart here. Um, I do keep all of my boys' artwork. I still have a lot of it displayed in my house. Uh, I think it's very important um, to display children's artwork. This section here, the paint brushes, I use a lot for dusting. I have to get around the um, bird nests because they do drop. So I'll just take my paint brushes and that's how I, basically that's how I dust um, out here around them. The, these are really cool. These I bought at a artist gallery. It was an open air market and they're just old pieces of tin tiling. Um, this is the artist here and they're really cool. They're old tin ceilings and they're just painted and wrapped and made into little containers. So I thought they were really cool. Uh, this little piece of art here, this was my grandmother's and I th actually think it was my, um, aunt Ruth's. Um, and there was a bar that used to go across from peg to peg, and it was to hang a girl's hair ribbon on. Um, but I love this. So if I can read it, it says, goodness, I can't really see it. What a something rack for my hair ribbons. Uh, I can't read that other word, but so, um, Again, I did not know my Aunt Ruth of Nellie and Ruth Designs. She passed away when she was 10 years old from influenza. And my dad, um, he was born just before Ruth passed. So I can only imagine what my grandma Nellie went through um, with that. And so I have a little bit of Ruth up here. Um, so here's another um, bird's nest and then I have a bird's nest tucked into this funky little um, piece of grape design, grape wreath design, which I think is really cool. Um, these two eggs are not real. This egg though, however, in this one is real. Um, it never amounted to anything. Mama sat on it and sat on it. She had three eggs, two um, hatched and flew the coop. Um, and this was the one that was left. So, um, and then I have this bird's nest here, which is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then in this corner, um, this is another little vase to put things in, but I just thought the flowers were so, so pretty. And then this welcome sign, it's hand painted on slate. Oh, I thought that would be very pretty for the, the potting shed and it hung on the door for a long time. And then this vase here was my mom's. It's, it's your mid-century modern, typical, um, very cool vase. My mom always had a tall flower in this. It doesn't matter what it was. She was a great gardener. And so I'm just, in her honor, I am have put this beautiful sunflower in here. Uh, the mermaids, my husband happens to love mermaids. So whenever we go to Key West, if he finds some sort of mermaid, he has to have it. These are cast iron. And these are all past notes of when um, Denny worked for me and all her notes that she kept. And eventually, I do have a gardening journal. I would like to get these um, notes in my gardening journal. But you can see here how much every day there's something to do. 
um, and she kept track, very good track. She was the best gardener I ever had uh, up here. Um, and she worked for me for three years um, every day. And she wrote in, in here, in all of these notebooks, what she did, um, if she fertilized, etc., etc., etc. Uh, right here, I have um, these two. These are bat houses, and my boys made these. I have yet to get them up. They've been in here for a couple of years. We do have a lot of bats up here, um, so I do want to get these up. But they made those for me. And then this old stool here, this was my great grandfather's. This was in his um, shed. So I use that to lift myself up out here. Um, the pine cone wreath, this I made when I was probably 15 years old. Um, my mom and I made them, and it's all out of pine cones, and you can cut certain pine cones um, certain ways to give you a flower appearance. So this was stored in my mom's cellar um, for many years, and then I, I took it after her passing, and I have it in my potting shed now. Um, what else here? I have my boy's bow and arrow. Um, and then over here, it's just, I keep all of my miracle grows. I keep my lawn sprinklers, which again, this is my favorite one. This is very old, very vintage-y. I bought this from a gal on Instagram and I absolutely love it. It outbeats all the modern ones. Um, it's wonderful. So I keep, you know, miscellaneous items here and some tools. Um, up here I have a basket of rocks that I've collected from when we've been to the beaches. A lot of those are skipping stone rocks. And then another mermaid, which um, my husband just had to have. And then my have to have my American flag displayed because it is the greatest country that we live in. Um, my little rakes, and that's it. And my little red wagon. Um, I use that a lot. This was my boy's wagon um, that was given to them when they were born. And as you can see, they used it a lot. It's gotten a lot of use. Someday I'll redo it, I, but I don't want to... Um, take off the radio flyer. I may just do the wheels up. But I keep my potting soils in here um, whenever I use them. So that concludes the tour of the potting shed. Um, I love it out here. There's a lot of days I'll just come and sit at my parlor table um, and just... I'll have a little bit of music on. I'll look at my gardening books, and it's just a place that soothes, soothes, soothes my soul. So um, I've got one more area to show you um, that I want to show how you can decorate with just pots. And if you have a space that gets a lot of heat and you do not have an area where plants grow or you have to water them two or three times a day. I want to show you what I do so you don't have to do that. All right, so we're going to head out of here and then we're going to head over to my front porch. Okay, so we left the potting shed and we are headed to the front. This is our wood. Um, most of this is left over from last year and we will use that this year. Now, I had to refilm um, this section of the video um, because it was just too bright and sunny before and it didn't come out right so um, this is uh, hours later this is after dinner and I'm out just don't look at my weeds it's really it's really a mess here um, I try to do what I can do there's an I have to transplant this um, little piece of bamboo I don't know I think a bird left that there for me um, but I have to, um, I wanted to do my front porch video when it wasn't so bright and sunny. Um, as you can see, the front porch is, it's, we have a stone home. 
and this section of the house the front gets sun from 11 in the morning until oh probably about four o'clock in the afternoon so i have to be very careful what i plant here um, usually it's hostas um, a lot of weeds as you can see we've had a tremendous amount of rain this year um, my virginia um, it's gotten very very large i mean the leaves on it are are incredibly large this year um, so i wanted to show you how I decorate the front porch when I have this issue with the sun um, just beating down on everything. Um, I have a little chair here. I, I can't do perennials on the porch obviously because of the heat. I can't keep up with the watering and then they just they just wilt and die. So I have a nice little excuse me I have a nice little chair here um, with my little puppy little puppy greets everyone with a little basket of pansies and I leave my packages here for the postman or my girlfriends during COVID this chair got a little a lot of action I would leave bottles of wine on it and then my one girlfriend would leave me a dozen eggs um, they have chickens so we would swap wine for um, eggs and <clears throat> everyone knows that that's the little delivery chair and then over here is what I do. I, I don't, I try to keep a really clean porch because I think your front porch is reflective of um, the inside of your home. So when I can't grow and maintain my annuals um, and even some perennials um, I'll put in here, it, it just, I decided that I would rather have, you know, something like a little piece of art. And I've done that with um, some extra pots that I have. I like stacking pots. I like texture and color. So these pots here, um, this is a little, I can't think of the name of the bush, but again, I have a lot of seedlings that are shooting up everywhere and where I don't want these plants to be, I will just dig them up and then I'll put them in soil and then later in the fall, I go and I transplant them along our wood line. Um, but this here, these pots, the bottom pot is probably, I'd say maybe 20 inches in diameter. So it's a, a large one. And these pots just happen to stack nicely. Um, inside so again because I can't keep um, plants they just don't thrive on this porch I'll do you know some sort of little piece of art with my pots um, and I know they look they look kind of small there but it really complements this corner um, I wouldn't want them any taller and then right here I have this little wooden um, handled basket. This was a Christmas arrangement that my girlfriend gave me. It had a lot of greenery in it and some little red Christmas ornaments. Um, so I dumped it out, obviously, when everything turned brown and died. And then I use it to display my um, clay pots. I have a lot of clay pots, as you could see, you know, before. And these go down in size and I just thought it was a really cute little piece. Um, the back stone is Irish worm stone. Some call it Irish worm rock um, and it's very very cool. You can see the different colors in it and it's fossilized where um, the worms ran through it and I'm glad that I redid this video because earlier you couldn't see all the colors of it and the texture but it's very, very, very interesting. And I just, I just love it. Um, it has a lot of iron. It's got the purples and the, the blues. Um, so it's really a nice feature focal point on the, ah, the mosquitoes are still out on the um, front porch. So I often thought about putting, you know, I, in, the, in the very beginning, I wanted to drill a hole towards the top where I could hang a nice wreath. Um, but it's, a sh it's shaly and with all the fossils, I didn't want to take the chance. I didn't want to crack the stone or anything. 
And then my other little piece of art on my front door is this cross here. Um, I got it in Key West years ago and it hangs on our front porch door because my daughter-in-law who is from Romania, her mom had contacted us um, when COVID started and um, the country of Romania was going to do a very large prayer. And they said that, you know, at a certain time, hang a um, cross on your front door and then the whole country was to pray and um, it's to stop COVID from entering your home. They said, do not take it down until COVID is over. So I don't know when that's going to be. Um, I could have it up here, you know, another six months, a year, two, three, four, five years. Um, but so far it has worked. COVID has not um, affected or entered our home. So that's a good thing. So that concludes um, the tour, my little tour of my craft room and of my front porch. And I hope you liked it. I hope I've given you some ideas as to um, how you can store your gardening books um, and other things and, and make a nice little art sculpture on your, your front porch um, that will just bring you that will bring you joy. So thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.